to fund our schools and law enforcement services. One way or the other, as the discussion sometimes around here gets dominated with all the reform talk, and Lord knows uh, as the majority party, we are willing and we think it is important that we engage in reform discussions around all the subjects have, that have been identified. But let us not forget that over the next six to eight weeks, we are going to face a more fundamental question. Are we going to allow schools to be cut $5 billion? Are we going to sit idly by while 20,000 or more teachers get laid off? Are we going to allow our sheriffs and our police chiefs to cut back in ways that communities, I think, will be shocked by? Are we going to eliminate virtually or in reality parole services because the state can no longer maintain that function. That's what's before us. And this bill at least gives an option to local communities. I urge an I vote. Thank you. All right, there is a motion. It is due pass to appropriations. Please call the roll. Wolk. Aye. Wolk, aye. Huff. No. Huff, no. DeSonier. Aye. DeSonier, aye. Fuller. Hancock. Aye. Hancock I. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez I. Kehoe. Aye. Kehoe I. Lamalfa. No. Lamalfa, no. Lou. Aye. Lou, aye. Thanks. The vote is 6 to 2. The bill is out. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. All right. All right. We are. Um, I'm looking for authors now. Other authors? Senator Padilla? Um, Senator Calderon? Senator Evans? Senator De Leon? And if not, we'll take a committee bill. Um, Senator Kehoe, would you like? I don't see any authors. Sure, I, I don't see any authors. Oh, wait a second. There's somebody in the hall. Senator Padilla. I'm sorry, Senator Key. I just walked in the door. <laughs> Senator Padilla, welcome. Senator Padilla, welcome. You know my recommendation, I will share that with the committee, is to um, make this a two-year bill. Um, and to uh, have you work with uh, both the Board of Equalization and the Department of Public Health um, and all stakeholders with my committee to um, uh, work out um, the problems that, and blanks that remain with the bill. Um, and I want to involve the Department of Public Health in that as well um, because this has some jurisdiction uh, with them, and it's my recommendation to make it a two-year bill. Okay. So. Well, I, I, I certainly heard that through staff, uh, but was um, preferring to make a presentation, at least to have a dialogue about this, because I think we're a lot closer uh, on some of the questions and issues raised in the analysis than, uh, than some folks might think. So if I, if I may begin by kind of presenting the context for the bill, addressing some of the specifics raised in the analysis, and kind of go from there. Um, Senator, if you want to have a presentation, we have a, an incredible calendar. We have to be out of here by one. Uh, my recommendation is to make it a two-year bill. Um, but I would prefer not to have a presentation at the end of which uh, there is no vote. Truly, but, uh, we have uh, but I, I, seven or eight sure. more bills, and we have to be out of here by one. No, I, I understand. Uh, I think some of the questions or reasons for why you would prefer to make it a two-year bill, I have a response for. So I'd like to be able to present, see if I can't uh, address your concerns enough to allow this bill to continue to move this year and while we address some of those questions that are raised in the analysis. But Senator, I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, you've, had, um, you've had bills in the subject area before that came to revenue tax. There were, um, uh, there isn't any substantive policy difference between those bills and the ones that you're presenting today. That's what you're alleging. But the fact is that's not the case. 
there should have been um, amendments to those bills. They were not addressed. Uh, so we have the same problems now. Um, you know, they're just what, what, what a brief. There are significant issues that have to be worked out. And what I'm saying is that this really needs to be a two-year bill. I'm supportive of the end goal here. I voted on those other bills before, but the blanks are enormous. Uh, can I request a... Uh, so, you know, I, I'm not comfortable working out amendments uh, at the dais with the kind of well, agenda I'm not we have. Well, I mean, I, I don't have any mock-ups for you today. I'm not suggesting we work out amendments in committee. You, the analysis recommends certain amendments that I'm willing to take as author's amendments. Uh, you know, there may be one or two specific areas that I, that I would disagree with. I'd like to present to the committee why I have a difference of opinion. If, if uh, what if I, I don't present right now, but don't, I'm not making this a two-year bill, maybe give us 20 minutes if you and I can maybe sidebar while other bills are presented uh, and then make a determination as to how to proceed? I'd be willing to do that, but we have a full agenda. I understand that. All right. You and I can talk. Okay. In the meantime, let's move forward with the agenda. Um, do we have Senator Evan? Who came in first? Calderon. Senator Calderon. But uh, we, uh, yes, and then Senator Evans. So Senator Calderon, item eight. Yes, I would. Senator Calderon, go ahead and make your presentation. Oh, yes, thank you. Just jump right in. We're trying to move things along. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members. SB 626. Uh, has to do with cannabis certification and regulation. And uh, what this bill proposes uh, uh, is uh, a study. The voters approved Proposition 215 in 1996, which allowed for the use and cultivation of medical marijuana or cannabis through a physician's uh, advisement. Patients, collectives, and local officials are looking for methods to create statewide regulation. Uh, SB 626 creates a mechanism for studying the best ways to control, to regulate, and test medical marijuana. SB 626 will include an advisory committee of experts from the Board of Equalization, law enforcement, and representatives in the industry. And the advisory committee's job will be to compile strategies for a stamping program exploring the for-profit aspect of medical marijuana, cultivating methods, and providing testing programs to ensure that the product is safe for patients. The report that results will be invaluable as the legislature addresses the state's challenges regarding medical cannabis. In addition, I would like to ask the committee to accept amendments as author's amendments. With that, I thank you, I ask for your aye vote, and there are some people here that would like to. All right, witnesses, uh, keep it brief, please. Um, yes, uh, Dale Geringer with California Normal, uh, one of the sponsors of Proposition 215. And uh, we think it's high time that the state did take a good look at uh, establish how to establish a regulated distribution system, as was called for in the uh, 215 itself. Uh, the current law on medical marijuana distribution and sales in California is a mess. Nobody knows what's legal, what's illegal. Everybody's confused. There's hundreds of lawsuits about this around the state. It's time to really straighten this out. And this is something that can be done. The state of Colorado had a similar situation as California. And last year, they passed a bipartisan bill to establish a state regulation system. Uh, I hear now they've collected over $7 million in license application fees. Uh, from over 2,000 applicants. Um, uh, I think we can do a similar thing in California. It's obviously a complex issue. We need to look at it. This is a $2 billion industry, and we're collecting, we have the potential to collect $200 million in sales taxes from this uh, through a reasonable regulation system. So I uh, urge your support. Next witness, support. 
Hello, I'm Lynette Davies with Crusaders for Patients' Rights, and I want to thank Senator Calderon for coming forward because we do need some really good rules and regulations in place. It's a study that is very, very necessary. We do have real concerns on um, on getting the right representation for our studies and that we have equal amount of people from each industry, whether it be agriculture, whether it be medical, for all the different sides, which we, we hope that the Senator will um, add to it so that it's not reserved to only the seven or nine or ten people because it is such a complex industry. and. Um, I know just by reading the, the bill's analysis, it was very, very lighthearted analysis, and we want to be sure that this is a this is a very serious thing. It's a lot of money that represent between the state. It's a lot of patients that are very, very interested in this, and the public. And we want to be sure that it's well represented. And so it, we do urge that the um, it be expanded a little bit longer. Thank you. Thank you. Other witnesses in support? Uh, please hello. Just... Uh, George Mull of the California Cannabis Association, a statewide association of medical cannabis providers and patients. We would like to express our strong support for the bill with the technical amendments which have been uh, put forward by Senator Calderon. Thank you. Thank you. Other witnesses in support? Just name and organization. Hi, my name is Andre Special. I'm with Americans for Safe Access, the nation's largest medical cannabis uh, advocacy organization. And we are in support of the bill. Um, we think there's a lot more work that needs to be done. Thank you. Other witnesses? Uh, Letitia Pepper, the Director of Legal and Legislative Analysis for Crusaders for Patients' Rights in Southern California. I also work with some other collectives and also with individual patients. And we support this. We agree that there is some need for study of this issue. Um, we would just like to see a broader representation on the advisory committee. For example, um, there are organizations of doctors who are spe specifically working on the issue of cannabinoids and how they help people. So in addition to the California Medical Association, we'd like to see representatives from, for example, the International Cannabis Cannabinoid Research Society. It's been in existence for 17 years. This is what they're studying. Okay. And we'd like Thank to see much. some Good other day. representation. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Name and organization. Yes. Um, first, I'd like like to to uh, thank the uh, senator for uh, br bringing this up. My name is Nate Bradley. I'm the executive director of Lawman per per protecting patients. I have a slight speech impediment. We are retired and disabled law enforcement officers who through who have become patients. We have can uh, cancer, multiple sclerosis. We seen both sides of it, and we would like to offer our our um, help if uh, any way possible with this commission. Um, okay. There's a lot of it we like, and we do want it to go forward. So, if there's anything my organization can do to help, we would like to uh, do that. Advances out. Work with the author on it. Any other witnesses in support? Witnesses against? Bring it back. Nobody's against. Yeah. Any uh, members, questions, comments, motions? Just a, a brief comment, Mr. Sure. Chair, if you don't mind. It just a, it's a study. <laughs> it's a study, and I, you know, for the last several years, we've had a number of bills on the subject pro and con. We have very little objective data. I don't know if any of it, and I'll ask the order of the author. Have, is, has any of our data that we hear at committee hearings been developed by a state agency, or is it mostly? You know, internet-based or, or national statistics. I'm really, I'm really not sure. You know, I, and I and I think we do need some of our own uh, accurate information. Uh, so I'm happy to uh, support this. I think it's information that would help the legislature do a better job in this policy area. So whenever the chair wants, I'll make a motion. Great. We'll take that as a motion. Um, yeah. Any other questions or comments? Finish it up. Oh. Is there cannabis? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> anybody else? <laughs> Any other questions, comments? All right. There's. Oh, I, I, had, I have one, sir. Oh, we do. Okay. Have one. Um, real quick. I mean, we still have a, a product here that violates federal law. Uh, the voters spoke pretty loudly on Proposition 19 last fall, and so for me, I, I can't s support something that in any way legitimizes the use of this product. But I also have confidence that where the taxing entities of State of California involved, they'll, they'll find a way. <laughs> to tax people. And so I don't know that we need to require a study that I, I'm, I, I have faith the BOE or if, uh, or what have you may find a way to do that. So, you know, I, 
I get where you're going, Senator, on that, and that uh, they should be taxed if they're around, but I, I just can't be part of legitimizing the, their, even their existence with that. So um, I can't support the bill on that cause, but I, I do get your concept there. You know, should, should you be successful, tax away. <laughs> yes. Go ahead and close. Well, yes, and to, to, to your comment, Senator uh, LaMalfa, uh, it, it is legitimate. California has made it legal. Last September, the federal government uh, made a, a statement, a public statement, saying that they are not going to be pursuing uh, uh, regulation and law enforcement in those states that have legalized marijuana. Now, it's not a statute. But it was it was a uh, an intent uh, uh, movement, and what that's going to do is it's going to encourage more and more of these dispensaries and the agricultural end, the, cu the cultivating end, to grow and come out of the come out of the uh, closet, come out in the open. Those that are not registered or licensed, so there is there is a real revenue uh, uh, re uh, source here that we need to tap in. That you know these. These are difficult times, uh, requires immediate action to collect as much sales tax available on medical marijuana, and we want to ensure that the product is sold in a manner that, that creates a disincentive for illegal distribution. Uh, this bill does not legalize the sale of marijuana for recreational use, nor does it alter the legal sale of medical marijuana. This is clearly merely a study. I'm very happy to have law enforcement organizations involved in this study, the UFCW, the unions are involved in the study because there's a lot of labor involved should the agricultural end uh, grow uh, and others that are gonna be on this advisory board. So I think it's time we get our own study and our own figures and I, I ask the committee to support this effort. Thank you, Senator Calderon. The motion is due pass as amended. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Wolk. Aye. Wolk, aye. Huff? Uh, um, no, I'm not voting. Uh, no? Almost got me. Desonye? Desonye? Fuller? Hancock? Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, I. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, I. Lamalfa? No. Lamalfa, no. Lou? Aye. Lou, I. The vote is four, th four to two. Uh, you need one more. Uh, we'll be uh, holding the roll open until the end of the hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Senator Evans, you're on. <laughs> Item number 12, as, and thank you, Senator Huff, SB 668, Senator Evans. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. I'll be as brief as possible. I know you've had a long morning. You have some amendments, I believe. I do uh, accept the committee's amendments. All right. And uh, Madam Chair, this is an attempt to be a little creative and think out the box in order to preserve our farmland um, Williamson Act. And... Um, we, you know, the Williamson Act does a lot of great things for farm uh, lands in the state of California, and the reason we have it, maybe stating the obvious, but it's to uh, preserve farms which provide food and preserve open space in the state of California, and our farms provide an enormous um, amount of economic activity in our state. The wine industry alone contributes $51 billion a year. Uh, to the state's economy pursuant to a 2006 study that was done by the California Association of Wine Grape Growers. But um, farmers continue to feel a lot of pressure on their lands, and one of those pressures is to sell to developers when land values become high. That's the reason for the Williamson Act, one of the reasons. Um, but in the last several years, we have been defunding the Williamson Act. And so uh, not only are we providing less and less funds for the Williamson Act, but we've actually even zeroed it out in the last year or so. So this bill would be a little creative and allow um, some nonprofit organizations throughout the state, including land trusts and others, to be able to work with their counties and work with their local form farmers and backfill those funds. That's what the bill does. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions and I ask for an I vote. All right, I believe there's support everywhere on this and, uh, and support, so briefly. Yeah. Uh, I'm Bill Geyer, uh, Executive Director of Resource Landowners Coalition. I uh, want to commend Senator Evans on coming up with an innovative idea that uh, has some potential, uh, also still needs quite a bit of work, and uh, we don't have a formal position on this, but I want to 
support moving the bill out of committee as a work in progress. All right, uh, further comments? Dora Leginsler, California Council of Land Trust, like Mr. Geyer, uh, we support the, the bill moving forward this year as we continue to explore whether there are other funding options that might work for landowners, funders, et cetera. We, we think it need, we're still working on it and committed to it and urge That's your I vote today. Thank you, and support. Madam Chair and members, John Gamper representing the California Farm Bureau Federation. Uh, we don't have an official position on the bill either, Does but we do have, have concerns position? about <laughs> the uh, permanent restrictions and permanent concessions of the landowners in return for a short-term uh, infusion of funds for the uh, subventions. And we're working with the author and their staff to uh, uh, figure out uh, modified approach to this and uh, we are not opposed to it moving forward but we do have concerns about the bill as proposed all right uh, whatever your position is <laughs> madam chair rico monstro donato with the trust for public land uh, in concert with the others no official position I'd like to see the bill move forward all right uh, the uh, motion is uh, do pass as amendment uh, as amended now i'll ask for opposition <laughs> all right uh, is there a motion thank you uh, the motion is due pass uh, as amended. Uh, please uh, close if you'd like. I'll ask for an aye vote. All right. Please call the roll. Wolk. Aye. Wolk, aye. Huff. Aye. Huff, aye. DeSonier. Fuller. Hancock. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Kehoe. Aye. Kehoe, aye. LaMofa. Aye. LaMofa, aye. Lou. Aye. Lou, aye. The bill has six votes. It is, uh, that's enough to pass. We'll leave the roll open for those who aren't here. Senator Wright, uh, I mean, Senator De Leon is the only one. If not, Senator Kehoe. Please call Senator De Leon. It's his turn. Senator Kehoe. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, this, the second hearing for this bill, where were we before? In that we've, we've been heard in Nat Resources and here. Uh, this has to do with um, ho holding endowment funds for uh, mitigation lands by nonprofits. Uh, members, over the last several years, state and local agencies have developed a productive private partner, uh, private partner, public private partnership um, with nonprofits to identify, hold, and manage uh, mitigation lands in the state. Public agencies typically don't uh, want to manage these lands after the mitigation agreements have been uh, finalized. Uh, they have uh, other priorities. There is also a benefit to the land resource because nonprofits can, uh, are usually local. Uh, they are in a better position to uh, resolve problems quickly and can respond to local issues on a, you know, on the ground basis. Uh, the, this bill builds on the public-private partnership it, by allowing the nonprofit to hold the endowment funds for the property they manage. Um, there are uh, m m lots of fiscal safeguards, but this has become a common practice. Uh, this bill puts it in statute. Uh, the bill is permissive. It does not require a public agency to enter into these agreements to transfer the endowment funds, uh, but it authorizes the agency should they uh, want to do that for that particular piece of land. So it's on a case-by-case -case basis, it's voluntary, and there's adequate fiscal protections. Uh, in fact, rigorous standards uh, for the nonprofit, uh, they, uh, the nonprofit must meet the standards in order to um, obtain the funds. In addition, the bill allows state and local agencies to use uh, standards or contracts with qualified entities to review qualifications and ongoing performance of the nonprofit. So there's consistent uh, monitoring. We took amendments in natural resources. Uh, there is a 10-year sunset on the bill. Uh, it's, the amendments further strengthened agency oversight. And I think that's about it. Not to mention it's an important step in strengthening the public-private partnership. But I'll simply ask for your I vote. Uh, Council of Land Trust has been the sponsor and has done uh, very good work on the bill. We have no uh, opposition to date. Darla Gensler is here uh, to answer some questions and to testify in favor of the bill. The committee had no amendments to pass uh, as it is to appropriation, so in support. Good morning, Madam Chair, and it's still morning, I think, and members of the committee, my name is Dara Ligensler. We're pleased to sponsor this bill. As the chair is familiar with this issue, there's been a whole series of efforts to improve how mitigation works, both for the public sector and for the nonprofits, and to assure good long-term management 
for these lands set aside as mitigation. This is the next step in that series of, of improvements that have been made to the law. It's permissive and uh, as the Senator said, has um, no opposition. I urge your I vote, thank you. All right, in support. In support, uh, Rico Mastrodonato with the Trust for Public Land. This uh, couples the money with the management. Good idea. Further support, opposition. All right, seeing none, comments of the committee or a motion? Bill's been moved. Uh, do pass is the motion to appropriations. Please call the roll. Wolk. Aye. Wolk, aye. Huff. Aye. Oh. Huff, aye. D. Sonier. You want to close? Sonier, aye. Fuller. <laughs> An aye vote is a great close. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Senator Huff. <clears throat> Thank you, Senator. <laughs> and Senator Wolk. <laughs> Hancock. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Kehoe. Aye. Kehoe, aye. Lamolfa. Aye. Lamolfa, aye. Lou. Aye. Lou, aye. <laughs> You have seven votes. That is enough to pass. Uh, we will leave the roll open for those not here. Senator De Leon, De Leon you're on. <laughs> SB 911. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, dear. Oh, my. <laughs> Normally, we wouldn't notice, but oh, dear. Oh, my. Senator, there are amendments that you've been asked to make. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, and I will accept those amendments. Uh, on SB 911, uh, the analysis uh, report on page four, um, and number one, instead of explaining the annual reporting requirement, rather to merely require the information specified in the bill to be available to anyone who requests it, and number two, to specify that the annual report must be filed within 60 days of the end of an agency's fiscal year. Those were the recommended. I'm making an assumption because there's some looks I'm uh, rather are we on the same page and not on the same page? Uh, Senator, just to clarify, those are the two, and I, I understand you were also asking to amend the bill to delete the provision relating to citizens' oversight. Actually, you, you didn't give me an opportunity to get there. I was getting there. I was progressing. Yeah, that's the natural evolutionary process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you are correct. And, and I want to thank you and, and, and the staff uh, for uh, uh, your input uh, as well. It's a good bill. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, whenever you tell me, Madam Chair. Keep going. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, again, on the last component with regards to uh, the Section 2, we are striking that. Uh, and again, I just want to score uh, kudos, or I should say more uh, respectfully, thank you to you, Madam Chair, and your staff uh, for preparing the mock-up of these amendments. Uh, this bill was introduced in response to the findings of the mismanagement in the Los Angeles Community College District's construction program and seeks to provide greater accountability and transparency in the bond fund expenditure process. Although increased reporting requirements are not necessarily the panacea to resolving governance problems, I do believe that they are a necessary step, a real concrete step forward towards increasing public confidence in the administration of taxpayer funded approved facility bonds. When voters approve local bond measures to modernize and build new schools or pay for other public works projects, they deserve to know how their money is spent. Their money should, uh, their, there should be, I should say, public access to this information and the annual reports should be released on time. SB 911 is supported by the California Association of County Treasurers and Tax Collectors, as well as ask me, Madam Chair, as well as members. I do believe this is a, a bipartisan measure and I respectfully ask for an I vote. All right, witnesses in support. Madam Very Chair, briefly. the members, Paul Yoder on behalf of the County Treasurers, this is a transparency good government bill and I just urge your I vote, thank you. All right, further in support. Witnesses in opposition? Okay, seeing none, seeing none uh, comments or motion from the committee? All right, the bill is due pass, has been moved. Due pass as amended is the motion. Please, would you like to close? Um, uh, Madam Chair, we swiftly ask for an aye vote. All right, please call the roll. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Huff? Aye. Huff, aye. De Sonier? Aye. De Sonier, aye. Fuller? Hancock? Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Kehoe? Aye. Aye. Lamolfa. Aye. Lamolfa, aye. Lou. Aye. Lou, aye. Seven. Uh, that, seven to nothing. That bill is out. Thank you, Madam uh, Chair. But no, I will leave the roll open okay. uh, for those that and, aren't here. And thank you, Madam Chair. And, and again, to your staff, too, for your hard sure. work. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Uh, Senator Dussonier, you said you had a uh, someone who has to leave. Yes. A witness? I have one witness has to leave. Okay. Uh, let's go then to SB 662, which is item 11 on the agenda. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, colleagues. Appreciate uh, 
um, allowing us to present 662. So we don't want to lose the counties. They're our partners. Um, this bill, just briefly, it comes from uh, a love-hate relationship, and I want to that I have with county government, having spent four terms in county government, I want to thank the chair in particular and all the work that we have done together on this issue, uh, both being former county supervisors. And the frustration at that level where you're delivering services and the opportunity around the governor's proposal around realignment, that we could actually deliver services based on the client's needs in a thoughtful way and get the state in its appropriate place, in my view, of oversight and basically expecting and incentivizing either uh, improved services and measuring that or lower costs or hopefully both. So what the bill does is establish a vehicle in a contractual relationship with a legislative analyst would analyze a negotiated contract between the counties and the Department of Finance and the administration based on specific programs that are the same programs that have been outlined in the governor's proposal for realignment and the pro tems bill on realignment and then encourages them to d establish benchmarks, and performance standards, so that they can deliver better services at a neutral cost. It also provides in 662 that if uh, money isn't allocated in the negotiations in the budget, that none of these contracts would go forward. So we're not sending services to the counties uh, in a way that they would have to pick up the slack without the resources. And I think most importantly, as I said, and I'm sorry to be redundant, but I think it's important for those of us who have dealt with the uniqueness of county government and the delivery of services in California that is unlike anywhere else in the country with the possible exception of the urbanized area around the Twin Cities in Minnesota, is that we should just provide the oversight um, provide oversight in terms of expectations. The counties deliver the services and we facilitate that by getting out of the way. And with that, I would uh, turn it over to the witness, um, Jane Hurst representing the CSEC. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Jean Hurst on behalf of the California State Association of Counties. Uh, as the uh, committee has heard from us before, we really uh, entered into the realignment conversation with the overarching goal of reforming the way we do business in California, in particular uh, the service delivery uh, of state and federally mandated uh, programs in our communities. Um, we uh, embrace the notion with the with uh, sort of a, a promise uh, from the governor and from uh, many members of this legislature that folks were really interested in looking at a new way of doing things, a new role for the state, uh, new flexibility at the local level, and. Um, that's sort of where we started the conversation. It really was the impetus to uh, get us to where we have gotten so far. Um, we view SB 662 as a, a, a work in progress, an opportunity to continue to have a dialogue about those important issues. Uh, obviously, we have a great deal amount of work left to do if we are to actually accomplish uh, all are part of the governor's plan, uh, but we do think that this is a critical piece to the realignment conversation, and we would urge your I vote. All right, further witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? I want to thank the author for bringing this forward, for moving um, uh, this forward. This is a practical step to put um, uh, some reality to the, uh, to, to fill in the, the details of the restructuring and realignment proposals for the counties, and I think that that's um, terrific, and I'd like to see this move forward. Are there comments um, from comments or move? Okay, it's been moved. Uh, the motion is to pass to appropriations. Would you like to close? I would respectfully ask for your I vote. Okay. Um, please call the roll. Walk. Aye. Walk. Aye. Half. Aye. Half. Aye. De Sonia. Aye. Sonia. Aye. Fuller. Hancock. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez. Aye. Kehoe. Lamalfa. Aye. Malfa I Lou. Lou I. Thank you so much. Senator Hernandez, you're next. Yeah. Item six has been withdrawn from the general. Senator Hernandez, item 10, SB 659. 
Thank you, Madam Chair and members, and I will be taking the amendments that were uh, offered by the committee, and I want to thank you as chair for all the work that you did to help me uh, resolve the outstanding issues. Um, the San Gabriel um, Basin Water Quality Authority is directed by a seven-member board comprised of one member from each of the overlying municipal water districts, one from a city with water pumping rights, and one from a city without water pumping rights, and two members representing water producers in the San Gabriel Basin. This bill is simply meant to allow member agencies and cities who belong to the San Gabriel Basin Water Quality Authority the ability to make changes as to who their representatives are and the water quality aboard. Uh, the provisions of the bill only apply to this particular authority and there is no opposition. With me today is Meg Katzen Brown, who represents the San Gabriel Valley uh, Water Company, which has a representative on the authority's board. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you. Uh, witnesses in support? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Meg Katzen Brown representing San Gabriel Valley Water Company. We are in support of this measure. We think that it will uh, allow the appointing authorities uh, to um, uh, have more responsive um, uh, representatives on the Water Quality Authority Board. And uh, we ask for your aye vote. Pleasure. Majority. Oh, majority. I thought you were going to change it. Right. I changed it. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, witnesses in uh, support. Witnesses in opposition. Seeing none, are there uh, questions or comments? Yes. Senator Huff. Yeah, I represent some of the uh, water districts impacted by this. They're in support of this, and I would be pleased to make the motion. All right, it's been moved. It's due pass as amended. The amendment comes out of, I believe, comment number four uh, with some change, um, striking a balance between fixed terms and at will. Um, for all of the uh, positions, they would be fixed terms, but of course a majority vote of the appointing authority could replace the member. And that has been agreed to by the author. So that is the amendment. The motion is due pass as amended. Uh, would you like to close? I respectfully ask for your aye vote, Madam Chair and yes. members. Would you please call the roll? Yes. Volk? Aye. Volk, aye. Half. Half, aye. DeSonier? Aye. DeSonier, aye. Fuller? Hancock? Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. LaMalfa? Aye. LaMalfa, aye. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. You have seven votes. That's enough for it to uh, pass. We'll leave it open for the remaining members. We have completed our agenda with the exception of Senator Hancock, who I understand has just begun to present her bill in education. So what I will do is go through the, uh, I'll, uh, let's go through um, all the bills and I'll remain here. F well, no, we all have to stay here. <laughs> well, let's go through. Might as well go through the bills. There is no one else. Can someone else present for Senator Hancock? Uh, that's what I heard. Something was going on. All right. In the meantime, let's look at, uh, let's open the roll. Are they in order? All right. The first is item one, Senator Simidian, SB 34, recommendation do pass, and we retain jurisdiction to bring that back. That will stay in approach. Please call the roll. Uh, the uh, the uh, hey, absent, absent members. members. That's two to three. Um, Dusonier. Dusonier, I. Fuller. Hancock. Lou. Lou, I. All right, that's four to three, and it is still remaining open. Uh, item number two, Senator Wright. Uh, the recommendation was that be held in committee. That's no vote, and it will be held in committee. Uh, SB 331, the recommendation was to hold that in committee. It has become a two-year bill. It is in committee. SB 436, Senator Kehoe, um, do pass as amended. The vote is 7-0. I don't think we have any new members. No. no, we will leave that roll open. SB 506, Senator Simonian, do pass as the recommendation. The vote is 4-0. Aye. 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 Fuller? Hancock, Lou, Lou, I. Uh, that has six votes, enough to get out, but we will leave it open for absent members. Uh, SB 626, Senator Calderon, 
Uh, do pass as amended to appropriations. The vote is 4 1. Call the absent members. Huff, Desaunier. Aye. Desaunier, aye. Fuller. She's just outside the door. Yeah. <laughs> Tell her to hang up. <laughs> Please call the absent members. Hey. SB 626. Fuller. Hancock. Lamalfa. He's no. no, he's already no. You've already voted. Um, this is uh, number eight, SB 626, Senator Calderon. Would you call the absent members? Again. Huff? Fuller? Fuller, no. Hancock? Five to two. That's enough to, um, to pass, but we will hold that open for the absent members. Uh, item number nine, SB 653. No. All right, item number 10, SB 659, Senator Hernandez. Fuller. Item number 10, SB 659. Fuller, aye. Hancock. All right, that is eight to zero. We will hold that open for the absent member. SB 662, Senator Desaulnier, item 11. Vote is six zero. Fuller. Uh, SB 662, item 11. Desaulnier, realignment. Yes. Fuller, aye. Hancock. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, aye. That has eight votes, uh, none in opposition. We will hold that open. Uh, item number 12, Senator Evans, SB 668. The recommendation is to pass as amended, 6-0. Desaunier? Aye. Desaunier, aye. Fuller? Aye. Fuller, aye. Hancock? Eight to zero, we will hold that open for the absent member. That's enough to pass. Item number 13, um, SB 830, Senator Wright, income tax credit. The vote is 2-2. Two, two. Chair voting no, vice chair voting aye, I believe. Yes. Desaunier? No. Desaunier, no. Fuller? Aye. Fuller, aye. Hancock? Lamalfa? Aye. Lamalfa, aye. Lou? Lou, no. That is four to four. Uh, it remains open for the absent member. Uh, Senator De Leon, seven zero. It's to pass as amended, SB 911. Fuller? Uh, 14, SB 911. De Leon. Fuller? Yes. Fuller, aye. Hancock? Eight votes. Uh, that's enough to pass. We will leave that open for the absent members. Last is the consent calendar. Um, two items, 15 and 16, SB 947 and SB 948. Please call the absent members. Sonia? Sonia, I Fuller. Consent calendar, 15 and 16. Aye. Fuller, I Hancock. Aye. Lamal, or, excuse me, Lou. Aye. Lou, I. That has eight votes. We'll hold the roll open. All right. Um, let's see. I see a note from, uh, okay, Hans Seyman, who is the Chief of Staff for Senator Hancock. Welcome. Uh, Item 7, SB 555. <laughs> this is a very, I didn't anticipate this is a very this controversial bill. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Han Hancock is presenting uh, measures in Senate Ed, so she couldn't be here. Um, SB 555 is a bill that we've, this is the third time we've run this bill. It has received bipartisan support and I believe has no opposition at this point. It's simply a measure that will give tools to local agencies to help homeowners finance energy efficiency and water conservation measures. It uses an existing authority. Um, we're just expanding it um, to homeowners to be able to help uh, offset the upfront costs that they 
face when putting energy efficiency finance or energy efficiency measures, solar financing, or conservation measures. Um, it basically puts a lien on their property, allows them to use the financing authority of a local government agency to put a lien on the property and then finance over a long period of time uh, the, the improvements. Um, it can be, the, these financial hurdles can be one of the major hurdles for homeowners to make these improvements and we believe that this is an efficient way to be able to finance those upfront costs. I have Christopher Lynch here who does a lot of um, local government financing with Hones, uh, Jones and Hall here to answer any questions and I believe we have the realtors here in support as well. All right, in support of the bill. Very briefly. Uh, yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, we support the bill. Right. Um, I, I should mention we represent a number of uh, participants in the public finance community who are very eager to see this bill passed. All right. And support. Christopher Carlisle with the California Association of Realtors in support of the bill. Uh, given the hour and the lack of opposition, i uh, leave it with uh, asking simply for your I vote. A wise move. Uh, further support. Come forward. Uh, identification only, please. Marlene Dumain with the East Bay Municipal Utility District in support. Chair members, Rachel O'Brien on behalf of the U.S. Green Building Council of California chapter in support. Okay. Uh, further support? Any opposition? All right. Hearing none. Uh, comments of the uh, committee? No. No. Bill has been moved. It is due pass. Um, discussion? Would you like to close? I would simply close by saying that this is a voluntary program that only the homeowners who are interested in participating in this program um, have to proactively seek out the financing from the local agency. It is only charged or only that, that lien is only put on the homeowners that want to participate um, to make those uh, improvements to their homes. I appreciate it and ask for your vote. Thank you. The motion is to pass. Please call the roll. Wolf. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Half. Half no. Desonier. Aye. Desonier. Aye. Fuller. Aye. Fuller. No. Hancock. Fernandez. Aye. Fernandez, I. Kehoe? Aye. Kehoe, I. Lamalfa? Lou? Aye. Lou, I. All right. That is uh, five to two. That is enough to, pa to pass. We'll leave it open for uh, Senator Hancock. And you might, since I have you here, uh, since we are finished our agenda, uh, maybe you can give me an idea as to whether or not she'll be coming back. Uh, she she will be, yes, she would like All to right, come then, back to vote. Then I will hold the roll, I will wait for her. Thanks. All right, thank you. I believe we are completed our agenda. Thank you very much, committee. Oh, uh, is there one, Senator Hernandez? Oh, all right, one second. Um, SB 506. Uh, Senator Simidian, uh, the vote is 6-0. Please call the absent members. Fuller. Fuller, aye. Hancock. Hernandez. Hernandez, aye. All right, that is 8-0, and I will hold that open for the absent member. Uh, Senator, we are opening the roll on SB 34. Senator Simidian, the, the vote is 4-3. Call the absent members. Fuller? No. Fuller, no. Hancock? All right, it remains 4-4 four, four and will remain on call. Right? Yeah? Okay. All right. Item SB 436, Senator Kehoe, the vote is 7-0. Call the absent member. Fuller. Aye. Fuller, aye. Hancock. The vote is 8-0. It remains on call. I think we are 
Thank you. Thank you. SB 5, I can't read it. 555, Senator Hancock, please call the no, vote 5 2. Recommendation do pass, please call the absent member. Hancock? Lamalfa? No. Lamalfa, no. All right, it is 5 3, and it remains on call.
There we go. All right, we will now open, welcome back Senator Hancock. We will now go through the bills um, that remain. Uh, first of all, SB 34, Senator Simidian. The vote is 4-4. It is due pass to appropriations. Please call the roll. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. All right, the vote is aye. five to four. That bill is out. Mm -hmm. SB 436, Senator Kehoe, the vote is eight to zero. Due pass to appropriations. Okay. Hancock? Which, uh, which one is it? Senator Kehoe, that's SB 436. Uh, you mean item four on the agenda? Does that happen? Hancock? Hancock. Aye. Hancock, aye. All right, nine to zero. That bill is out. Senator Simidian, 506. Uh, the vote is eight to zero. Do pass with amendments to appropriations. Chair voting aye. Hancock? Hancock, aye. Nine to zero. <laughs> Nine to zero, that bill is out. Um, Senator Huff, Huff's bill was removed from the agenda. SB 555, Senator Hancock, you want to vote on your own bill? Um, the vote is five to three. Please call the roll, do pass. Hancock? Hancock, aye. <laughs> the vote is six to three, that bill is out. Uh, Senator Calderon, SB 626, um, the vote is five two. Please call the roll. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. That bill is six to two and it is out. SB 653, you voted on that, you moved the motion. SB 659, Senator Hernandez, uh, do pass as amended to, to approves. Please call the roll. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Nine to zero, that bill is out. Senator De SB 662, uh, vote is eight to zero, do pass to approves. Aye. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. That is nine to zero, that bill is out. Senator Evans, SB 668. Uh, Williamson Act subventions do pass as amended. Please call the roll. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. That is nine to zero, that bill is out. Um, Senator Wright, SB 830. Um, chair voting no. Uh, the vote is 4-4. Four, four. Please call the roll. Hancock? There were amendments taken prior to its coming here. Uh, CEQA mitigation was still to be paid for, could be paid for by the credit that is being proposed. Um, and there was a great deal of concern on my part about the complexity of the credit and the fact that it extends out um, and could be up to 50% of the completed project as, as opposed to a incentive up front, it was a reward at the end. The suggestion from Senator Kehoe was we have a select committee on ports. The issue involving um, uh, the competitiveness of our ports and what we can do to make sure that um, uh, they remain competitive um, in Los Angeles. Um, she suggested a hearing in the fall. I agree with that. A, a um, uh, informational hearing in LA. Chair's recommendation is no. The um, uh, Vice Chair voted yes. Hancock? Um, no. Hancock, no. But I, I do look forward to the hearings mm -hmm. to work out something um, for the courts because I think that was the All right. Uh, the vote is four to five. Uh, the bill fails. Reconsideration is granted. Uh, SB 911, uh, I believe Senator De Leon. Uh, the to pass as amended, uh, the vote is five to zero. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Okay. Nine to zero, oh, I misread that, it was eight to zero. It is now nine to zero, that bill is out. Consent calendar, two items, 15 and 16, SB 947 and 948. Please call the roll. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. All right, that is nine to zero. The consent calendar is approved. I believe that is the last item. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. We are adjourned.